Hello, everyone. Let's talk about using PBIS rewards in your classroom. We are glad that you are joining our Canyon Jew Bite Size PD today, and we'll go ahead and get started. Um, there's our professional development norms. Keep those in mind as you consider your learning, your independent learning today. Um, learning intentions and success criteria are that I will. I'm learning about online PBIS rewards platform so I can use it in my classroom and I'll know it's successful when I can use it to reinforce rules and expectations as well as use it to manage student reinforcements. Um, this is our MTSS framework. This is the basis for um, our instructional practices that we do in the district. I just wanna specifically point out the classroom PBIS um, is that the behavioral instructional priorities is, is where you'll find the focus for this presentation. The token economy and classroom PBIS are the instructional practice we'll do. And many schools, this ties into school-wide PBIS. Um, PBIS rewards is something that is used at a school-wide level. And we have 16 school, elementary and middle schools that are currently using PBIS IS rewards in the district. Um, Canyons Online is using it, so they also reach the high school level. We also have our alternative high school looking at it, so we, we do have interest from all three levels in this. And, and so if you're watching this, you're probably already seeing that it's being implemented in your building. This is also the school climate and safety umbrella, I'm looking at um, having that positive school culture and climate, a welcoming place where students can learn, also that they can feel safe. This is something that we definitely wanna be working on at the moment, among many other things, and PBIS has its role in that, in, that, um, in thinking how we to reinforce the correct and also that positive to corrective ratio so that students feel like um, they can have success in what we do. Just a little background on PBIS Reward. It, it is a website that is dedicated to um, student and classroom rewards. Um, it tr helps track their behavior. Um, it helps give points, help you, helps reinforce the expectation that your school has. This is where you find the login to PBIS Rewards. I'm guessing if you're watching this, this is something you have some experience with. This is a basic introductory video to PBIS Rewards and how it works. I have timestamps that go over different parts of these. If this is something that maybe you want to be showing, you know, you want to be sure informing other people, or maybe you just want to review the basics, I leave this here. This is something that you can definitely watch at your convenience. And that's one thing I'll be doing a lot of today. I'll be linking to a lot of resources. Um, and the ones that pertain the most to you, I would highly encourage you to go on and look at yourself. Most, if not all of these, come from the PBIS Rewards uh, support site, which is great for both PD and for um, troubleshooting um, issues. They have excellent resources, and I'll show you how to access those at the end of our Bite Size PD today. The easiest way to think about um, class, the there's different types of rewards and the easiest one to use by far is the classroom store and you can set up uh, a my store for the classroom so you can do one for your own classroom in addition to what is done uh, for your school so let's go ahead and go into the program i am just i'm going to pick altair elementary because it's a and because nicole won't get too mad at me um, I'll make sure to guard student confidentiality, of course. But if we go here and we go to the store, you'll notice that you can have a school store or you can go to a my store. We'll pick in the alphabet. This is the district access I have. I will pick Butler Middle School really quickly because I know they have this. You'll notice that they have you have teachers that have their own stores and they are things that you can make public for example if you are working in a group um or if you you know if you know you have a house or some sort of organization that way around um, 
around your core courses. You could have something that's opened up. You could also have um, stores if maybe you're a related service provider or a social emotional learning um, staff member, counselor, school psychologist, etc. And you want to have something public that you can, you can have all your students access without um, uh, differentiating it very much. So you can go to my store. I'm going to go back to Altera because I was practicing with them earlier. And in the store, you basically have your store set up. You set up the items that you want to purchase. Um, I don't have access, but you would have an edit button. But this is where you can check out. And let's say that I got a Chick-fil-A gift card. I hit checkout. Let me use my test student. And there we go. There is my test student. Now, one feature I want to show you, I, I can't demonstrate, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate it very well because um, it won't let you do it with a test student, and I don't want to break confidentiality with students. So you can use a redeem later feature. That's actually a little bonus feature. So if I were to click redeem later and hit finish, now you notice this data not recorded. So I, it, it won't actually show up, but I'll show you what um, where you go to find this. Let's say that um, you have a, you let students are able to, you know, you have students that they want to be able to pick items, but you don't want them to be able to obtain those items until the end of the day with say bouncy balls or 3D puzzle erasers, which this is for a whole school. But let's say those were the items you got and you said, you can, you can check out and spend your points whenever you want, but I will give you the bouncy ball at the end of the day. That might be a good teaching strategy. What happens when you do that redeem later option is you go to this cart that says redeem and you'll have two options. You can do redeem purchases and approve purchases. With redeem purchases, what that is is any purchases that have been that have been made can be redeemed. So you would go in again. You you can't see it unless I do it with a real student, and I don't have permission to do that for a guinea pig student. But you see their name, homeroom, what the item is in the store. You'd find their name like this. Or you can do a show all students, and it will show all the students that um, have prizes waiting to be, be redeemed by you. It will have a redeem feature over here. Basically, you click yes or no. Um, it also gives you the option to cancel. So let's say that um, let's say that for some reason the student changes their mind, or they want to do something else. They want to do a uh, they want to attend an event, which is something we'll talk about in a minute and they don't want the bouncy ball anymore. You can actually go in and cancel the purchase right here, and then it just refunds the points back to the student, and then they're free to redeem it however they want. The approved purchases, um, what that is set up for is that's to approve uh, purchases that students have made. Um, if you're at a secondary level, and some elementaries have done this, students are able to um, go into stores that they have access to and spend their points how they would like. Um, they can do that through the app on an iPad or an iPhone, uh, or I believe they have an Android version as well, but I'm not positive. Or they actually through Clever can log into the website and use their Chromebook and they can go in and actually say, um, Hey, I want to do these purchases. Here you can approve, approve or deny that purchase. Um, that's built. It's just a built-in precaution in case there's some reason that needs to happen. And then you can select whether you, if you approve that purchase, then you can select whether you redeem it now or redeem it later, that's as as you can do with other purchases. So this is where teachers or other staff members can approve student purchases. If you're doing redemption later, this can do redeem purchases. This is really helpful if you're running a school store, but also really helpful if you want students to be excited and be able to spend their points and have that anticipation. 
but you want to have a little more control over when you hand and give out those prizes. So those are nifty little features, some pro tips we've learned. Um, this isn't necessarily specific to the store, but uh, another thing that we've learned is this, the, the system updates students, but it doesn't update groups automatically. So I'll sh and groups is the word in PBIS rewards for classes. Um, it will automatically set those classes based on a Skyward sync. Um, you can also create additional groups. Um, for example, let's say a social worker is running a friendship group. Um, the social worker would be able to go in and create their own group. It's not set up for them um, like it is for teachers through a clever sync. But in those synced groups, um, it it will add and take out students as they move around, move in and out of classrooms, but it doesn't automatically update the groups. The way to do that is you see this little button right here, this little refresh button. You click that and he says, are you willing to resync all groups? You say, yes, I would. And when you do that, it kind of runs here for a while. If you're doing an elementary school where, again, you're talking about 25 synced groups, uh, it takes about a minute or two. But if you are at a middle school level or somewhere with a lot of groups, for example, I, I synced Butler Middle School earlier today and there was like 400 and something groups, um, that will take anywhere from two to five minutes to sync. That does take a little bit more time. But when you do that, it'll put everyone in the right period. It'll put everyone in the right class and then um, you can be able to use the system from there. All right. Uh, and you have, again, those links where you can refer back to if you need to. Another type of reward that you can do in the system is called events. Events is something that the student can learn to be able to participate in. Events can be done by either a student getting a certain level of points or they can spend their points. So there's writ written in video directions right there, but I will go into the system and kind of show you what events looks like. So I'm gonna pick an event. I'm, at, I'm gonna set up an event. And if you're, anytime you use the word my, that means you're setting up an event from my classroom, my space, my room. If it does, If it's a general event, that's something that would be done for the whole school. And only certain people have permission in the program to do that. So I'm going to set up an event for my classroom. So it's, it, you can look at what events you've done in the past. And I believe, uh, and I believe you can act, if you have something you've done in the past, I believe you can duplicate the event. So once you create one of these, let's say you're going to do a popcorn party once a month, you can actually duplicate that event, change the details, and then you can just kind of set all those events up at once. So you, it saves you a little bit of work. So I'm going to add a new event. And there's three types of events. There's redeem. So basically, uh, students purchase their way into attending the event. So everyone with the students would spend five points and that, that's a choice they have. You can do it as a qualify. So, um, so it's, this is, a, this is an example that you wouldn't exactly do it this way with PBIS rewards, but um, if you think about like the no tardy parties that you often see in middle school to help encourage, uh, encourage not having tardies, that would be an example of a qualify event. Basically, anyone that is at a certain number of points automatically gets to attend the event. So anyone with 20 points, um, it, 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 will, it will let them, allow them to attend, and you can just kind of see within the system. Or you can have a reward event. So the examples I can think of with this, 
support students that attend parent-teacher conference or come to an after-school thing or, um, you know, uh, maybe students that are attending an assembly or th those sorts of, like, if there's a good thing that you want students to attend and give them the opportunity to earn points, that's where you can click on the reward points. And then there's, and then it changes the menu altogether. And it basically becomes this other opportunity to get points outside of the traditional like scanning points and things. So I'm going to go ahead and hit redeem and we'll have the students purchase. Um, you know, we're going to call it the popcorn party. And you're going to give a further des description. A month. We will get the description in. And this is where you specify, like, basically how much it's going to cost, just like similar to do in a store, because this is a privilege or an opportunity rather than a tangible thing. So let's say that this thing is two points. Now, student limit. This usually. Um, it usually applies more to uh, a school-wide, but if if you want it to be an exclusive event, for for instance, um, you want you want it to be a popcorn party, but for some reason that's special and only five students can be able to enter. This is where you put a student limit, but um, but most of the time, if you're doing an event where anyone could really be part of it, you're going to leave that blank for a moment specify when that's going to happen. So I'll specify the 29th. And, and you can specify for grades or all grades. Honestly, if it's for your classes, it probably won't, that one won't matter that much. And this show and list means, will it show for students? So basically, if it's something you automatically qualify for, there's, there wouldn't be a reason for them to like spend their points on it. But if you show it in the list, allow students to purchase it, that basically says this is something you can buy. I will save that event. And you notice, again, I can duplicate, I can edit it. And then if once that event is done, you can kind of complete the event right here. And this is where you would see the students who have signed up for that event. If you wanted to, you could print off that list, export it, et cetera, et cetera. Especially if maybe you were doing it um, not at a whole school level, but maybe just for your grade level or just for a certain subject. Or, um, you know, if you're in a, a middle school core team, that sort of thing, it might be helpful to be able to print off this list if it's going to be something that where you have multiple classrooms coming coming together for one event, even if it's not for a whole school. You can export that to an um, Excel file if that's helpful, or you can just get a list to print as well. And then you can save this list and then just mark complete, and then it will go into your completed events that you can see right over here. And then you are all set to go. So that is how my events work. Um, the next type of thing we're going to cover is the raffle. So, and one thing I make a note of in the slide. Um, May, you might want to call it a drawing for gambling reasons. So we, we'll talk about this later, but I'm part of a Facebook group called PBIS Rewards Break Room. And uh, that's where you can get some great ideas of how to make it a better tool for you and your school and your classroom. And on there, there's a comment on there. There is technically the prohibition on gambling. Don't mention this around March Madness and basketball brackets and things, but, but technically those would be games of chance and illegal. If, if, um, so someone said this could be an issue. So ha they posted the question of in Utah, how do you get around it being called that? And there was a suggestion from some people from other states to say, oh yeah, we have similar restrictions as well. And so we call them a drawing. And if you call them a drawing rather than a raffle that may feel like it doesn't run quite as a 
afoul of, of the prohibition on, on gaming in Utah. Anyway, and raffle is what you think it is. Basically, students buy a ticket and get an opportunity to win something bigger. Um, so I will just show you what one of these looks like rather than create one from scratch. You can see oftentimes raffles can are, are, tend to be for events or for privileges. So look at that one, sit at the teacher's desk, lunch with the teacher. So you'll look, look at this. You put the date, how many students, how many points it requires, um, what are the details, how many winners could there be. So if you have a, a class of 25, you may have one or two winners. You, of course, get the grade. Um, you, you can designate it similarly to events where basically everyone that has a certain number of points gets automatically entered into the raffle. So you can kind of do it you know, randomly for the whole school as long as they are at a certain level or students just like they can buy a raffle ticket or a raffle or an entry um, they can buy an entry into this and so especially for your students who tend to be uh, hoarders with their tickets or their points um, this could be something you know if it's i really want to have a lunch with that teacher i might do like 30 entries and another student you know throw a couple points at it, but it's not as motivating to me as the candy. Um, this gives student more choices, and but it really helps with those point hoarders. Um, usually they will kind of tend to spend, they, they could tend to spend big on these. Um, and it you know, shows you what the prize. It, um, this is where you would see how many entries have been entered and which students are entered into it. Again, you see the automatic entry area or you can add entries. Students can spend their money on this. And then as soon as you kind of have enough going here, you can actually run the raffle. You hit run raffle. It, you know, think, you know, the old fashioned drum barrel, like, and it has a little bit of a noise and it lets you know who the winners are. And it randomly selects from the raffle entries of who the winners are. Um, this can be, you know, this gives, this is a way students can spend their points and get opportunities for bigger items without um, you necessarily having to spend a fortune. Um, this gives just get, buys them a chance into something, so to speak. Um, if you've ever used a mystery motivator, this can't, it, there's no mystery in the motivator, but this can kind of work the same way where students basically buy their opportunities into getting something bigger. And these probably are, would be run a little, um, less often than the other things. And again, you have links to support you. Um, and one thing I wanted, a couple things I wanted to do really quickly is give you some, I wanted you to have a self-reflection. What are some creative things you have used for rewards in your classroom? So think about those things, about things you've heard from colleagues, and then think how would the, these might fit in the PBIS reward categories of store, events, or raffles. And again, sometimes the non-monetary things are the best. And if you're you're kind of stuck, it's like, ah, let's drag the share. I need, to, I need some fresh ideas. Students aren't responding to what I usually do. There's a great resource that I'm about to share with you for incentive ideas. Um, there's one for students and one for teachers. I include the teacher ones because maybe you could give some hints or maybe you're on the sunshine committee for the school um, about what are some great ideas for student and teacher rewards. So let me show you what this site looks like. So these are PBIS sounds and I've used this resource for years. I think it's wonderful. Um, even if if you're not part of the PBIS reward system, this is something that they offer for free and, and it's a great idea generator. And when they say the ultimate list, it's the ultimate list. I'm gonna scroll through it really quickly and you can just see how long this list is. And if you happen to be in a modality where you're doing online teaching, they also have ideas for virtual and di digital learners. So let me show you how this resource works really quickly. Um, 
incentive, and then you have the opportunity to filter in four different categories. You can filter by grade. So if I'm teaching third grade or I'm in middle school and I have mostly seventh graders, you can click there and it will sort the list for you by grade. That way, you know you're dealing with something that is gonna be appropriate, age appropriate um, for your students. Now they have a great filter for price. As you can see, there's this fun category called free. But if you are getting items in bulk, maybe you're wanting something that's an extra special prize. Like again, if we're thinking about the raffles, you you know you may want to consider something besides that. There are these inexpensive things like here, admission to a school carnival. They consider that to be an expensive item, especially because it probably doesn't cost the school anything other than they don't raise the revenue for the school carnival. So you can sort through things. Let's say I'm going to do free. You'll notice it keeps my sorting of grade level as well. And I'm going to stay on free. Now the next category um, is the type of reward that you get. You can get tangible items, candy, toys, all those sorts of things. You can get recognitions. Um, those would be certificates and some, you know, student, student for a day, earning a class job. Well, actually, that's more of a privilege. And then the category I think is overlooked the most is privileges. Because oftentimes, kids have plenty of stuff, but privileges really matter. And if you think, and if you think just having something special, like kids won't buy into that. Think about when you're at the airport. Think about those that have Delta Sky Miles and that are elite, diamond, whatever. They put out, they have a different line and they put out a red square of carpet, but that signifies status. That essentially is a privilege. And yet, and yet people will pay, will, will do all kinds of things to buy into that privilege. So privileges can really me a lot. And then value is, is kind of in this one to three trophy value. The way I look at value is kind of like um, what kind of bang for your buck, even if it, you aren't spending any money, you're going to get. A, a one trophy are things that are smaller, everyday things. Your, your two trophies are probably like your yeah, once a week or something like that, once, once a month. And then your three trophies are like your big things. And you can see afternoon movie, cooking lesson, volunteer field trip. And these are things that either have a great cost financially or a great cost as far as social capital, teacher time, etc. And I think you'll see, you know, be a mentor. That's something that you can do pretty easily, you know, an art party, um, bingo. They either don't cost a ton or take some teacher time to do, or forethought, if that makes sense. So I hope that it kind of helps explain that. All right, a couple other things, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, I just wanted to point out that Again, the links to many of these things are on the PBIS reward support site. That's the website right there. And you must be logged in with, the, with your active account to access. It has guides, training videos, frequently asked questions, training, like anything you want to know about PBIS rewards, they have there. And then they also have a great support line if you are wondering about doing something. They also are great about taking feedback. And um, on there, you'll also find great general information about PBIS and rewards and, and how that works with students. I mentioned earlier that there's a Facebook group, the PBIS Rewards Break Room. Um, I think I, I've been a part of that for a little while now, and I think you get some great ideas and suggestions, both at the school level and um, at, for your own classroom. You know, that people just throwing out ideas, have suggestions. They do have giveaways as well. 
um, and kind of let you know about upcoming training opportunities. So I would highly encourage you to make that part of your PLN. And last but not least, I want to thank you for joining this uh, Canyon Jew uh, recording. This is again the important links to remember. That's the Canyon Jew site. This is the Bite Size PD page. And if you are watching this and thinking, how can I get some relicensure credit? Since I'm relicensing, I know that's important. Um, after you've watched this, you click on that form. It gives you something to fill out, and you can get a half a half a relicensure credit. You string together several of these, and you have yourself a way to make yourself relicensed. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.